Hi, and welcome to another episode of the European Tours Life on Tour podcast. I'm your host, Ewan Porter, and today I'm chatting to one of the brightest young stars in the world of golf. He just happens to be a fellow Australian. Min Woo Lee, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Um, we all know we're only here because we're both Australian and you want an Australian on the podcast, so I'm here. Yeah, too <laughs> true, mate. Absolutely. You've been ruling the world lately. Uh, look, I know you've had a busy schedule uh, of late in Europe, but did I see on social media that... Are you in Dallas right now? Yeah, I'm in Dallas, uh, Texas. Uh, my sister lives here, so I was chilling with a host family for a week and then uh, she just came back from... A big win, so uh, yeah, we're we're out here. We took a couple of days break, and now we're out here um, grind grinding for the next one. Yeah, nice. Well, look, as as we do with many of our guests, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a journey back to to where it all began, which for you really wasn't that long ago. Uh, Perth, Western Australia. I know your mum's a golf pro. Is that how you and your sister got into the sport? Yeah, uh, mum was a golf pro back in the days, and then. Uh, Moved over to Australia, moved over to Perth and then um, brought my dad over and then she just started teaching and that's how we got into it. We, uh, we just, um, I guess, copied her when she, you know, when she would teach other people. So, I mean, yeah, it kind of, kind of came naturally and we played a lot of other sports, but golf was, uh, golf was probably the, the biggest sport that we um, got into. So, um, yeah, ended up playing it. Well, I know your parents own a cafe there in Perth. Uh, when you weren't playing golf or any other sports, was that uh, was that a regular hangout for you growing up? Uh, we only had this um, cafe for about a couple of years now, probably probably two years now, um, max. And it's uh, yeah, we I guess <laughs> when I was over there, I was I would have breakfast there nearly every day, and the chef would get annoyed at me because I would get this big breakfast every day. So. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's been awesome. Stay always busy. And, uh, I did work there a few times when I had a couple of weeks off, keep weeks off. And it was, um, I would stick to golf cause that's stressful. That's very stressful. Like making coffees and doing all that. Look, I know, I know Australians can be pretty fussy, uh, about their coffee between you and me, of course. Uh, how's the coffee there at the cafe? Is it good? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not really into coffee, but, uh, which, like, yeah, I'd, I get too jittery when I play golf and had it and I had it once at a tournament and that was a really, I guess, a good learning experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, the coffee is really good. Uh, well, the people that come come back say it's really good. So uh, I'm speaking for them, but I, um, I've had a couple coffees there and it's been really good. Um, but that, I don't really know much, much coffee. So uh, I know it's, it might be a bit better than America, which everyone says. So uh, I think Australian <laughs> coffee, Australian coffee, um, beats beats america but uh i mean yeah i i can't really say much but uh, i think it's good <laughs> well i'll vouch for the aussie coffee being pretty good look you had a very decorated uh, junior and amateur career you, you won a couple of western australia amateur titles uh, runner-up at the sahali players am third at the asia pacific amateur championship but undoubtedly the highlight 2016 winning the u.s junior championship which uh, your sister had done uh, the, she'd won the U.S. Junior Girls a few years prior to that. I mean, the first brother and sister combination to win the U.S. Junior Championship. It's got to be a, a really special memory for you both. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, we haven't really won recently. Uh, I mean, other than a couple of weeks ago. But um, yeah, it's, it was kind of like the same feeling. It was like, oh my god, we've just done something really cool. Um, obviously, winning. You know two weeks apart, a week, a week apart. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy to think. And it's just, um, it's just an amazing achievement. Uh, I mean, us junior was a really big highlight, probably the big, well, the biggest highlight in, in my junior career. And obviously that start kickstart everything. And, uh, I, you know, I just started believing in myself and, you know, you could, you could win a, a lot of other tournaments cause you just won the biggest one in, in the world in like as a junior tournament. So, um, it definitely uh, definitely helps um, winning that, and obviously my sister won too, and it's just a it's a special feeling. Well, looking back at uh, at the scores from that week when you won, I mean that was a that was a really high caliber field. The likes of Norman Jong uh, was playing, and then of course Joaquin Neiman, Garrick Higo, a couple of guys who you're playing with uh, on tour now. H have you been friends with those guys from from a young age? Do you still hang out while you're out there on tour? 
Uh, actually, I, met, I saw Norman like a uh, like a month ago when I was in Vegas. He was practicing out at TPC um, Summerlin, and it was yeah, it was just nice to see. I haven't seen him since amateur days, and same as Garrick. I I didn't really know him as a junior and amateur, but you know, I saw him out, and he won. You know, obviously he won a couple of events uh, on the European Tour, and that was really good to see. And then obviously on the PJ Tour, and same as Joaquin. I mean, uh, we don't obviously I haven't been in. Um, I don't live in America, so I don't really see them too much, but. Uh, now that I'm, you know, now that I'm on the European tour, which uh, Garrick is and a couple others are, and uh, I play some of the WGCs and the PGA Tour tournaments, I see those guys too. So it's it's really good to see them doing well. Well, another big junior event that uh, that you had a couple of really good finishes was the Sage Valley Junior Invitational, just outside of uh, Augusta. Uh, I think top three finishes from memory in 2016 and 2017. But one thing that stands out from memory was when you were hitting balls alongside Tiger and having long drive comps with him. That must've been a pretty cool experience for a teenager. Yeah. Um, I say to all the juniors, that's, that is like the pinnacle of like junior golf and it's, you know, the top, I don't know, hundred top 70, 80 juniors in the world get to play that. And, you know, they pay for everything and you're not going to say no to it. It's, it's literally the, the masters is the Augusta is, Augusta National is like literally 10 minutes around the corner and I, I haven't been to Augusta but you know some people say it's like as good as Augusta or even better so I mean that's one of my favorite courses and it's um, I've played all around the world and it's just a special experience you get your own rooms with with uh, other juniors and you're in like a you're in a dorm but the houses are on the golf course and it's just amazing everything's just green and luscious it's really good um, but that's you know being especially like it's a Nike tournament. Um, Tiger was there. Jason was there. And um, yeah, I drove Jason and I'm, I'm pretty good friends with Jason now. So I uh, give him give him smack for it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, same as, I mean, obviously I saw Tiger uh, yesterday from um, some of the sources that he's back and it's awesome to see uh, him, you know, doing rehab and um, getting healthier. So uh, it was it was an awesome experience. That's one of the highlights of my life. Well, you travelled a lot uh, to the US as a junior and as an amateur. It's not easy when you're young to do that. How did you cope with it? But and did it prepare you for uh, for tour life? Yeah, uh, tour life is definitely different. You're by yourself a lot. You're you got to be pretty independent. But as a junior, you you have your friends, you have your team, and it's really fun. I mean, I my my advice to young kids is just to have fun and enjoy all those moments because you don't, when you get to pro life, I mean, you can still hang out with your friends and that, but you got to take care of yourself and you got to, you know, um, not many people feel bad for you. So you got to, you got to start um, performing if you're not performing well. So uh, it's, it's a pretty tough life out here, but hopefully you guys are good enough and you guys can uh, start winning um, at an early age or if not, I mean, we'll keep working hard and, you can, I guess, good golf takes care of itself. So uh, it's a it's a big change, and um, that's what we dream of as kids. Well, I sent out this uh, this tweet actually last night. Um, where you grew up in Perth over over the last twenty years, for reference, Perth uh, the population is two million people, which is similar to Idaho or, or Latvia in, in Europe. And over the last twenty years, uh, outside of yourself and your sister. There's also Hannah Green, Greg Chalmers, Nick O'Hearn, Brett Rumford, Michael Sim, Curtis Slack, Ollie Goss, uh, Scott Strange. The list goes on. Uh, it's it's quite incredible what you've all achieved in in the world of golf. Uh, the numbers are staggering. Uh, what's why is it so conducive to producing world class players? Um, I yeah, I uh, I've had this conversation with a few people, and I think that. It's just the independency that we have. We live so far away from the other states and we don't have like a team environment as much as the other states. And we have to do a lot by ourselves. And I think that definitely makes a big difference because as a tour pro, you are your own team and you have to take care of yourself. You're the boss of your, yourself and your team. So you need to you need to learn that from a young age. And I think that, is a big that was a big uh like factor in why we do so good uh obviously being in a team you know once a while it's really cool having camps and that and i really enjoy it but i think it's it's definitely impacted us the right way uh 
as amateurs and as successful tool pros. Well, you turned pro at the beginning of, of 2019. Uh, walk me through that decision and then what, what the initial plans were. Yeah, uh, well, like every other pro, I wanted to turn quick and I wanted to turn at the end of 2018. But then um, we just thought I was not mature enough and not good enough, not, yeah, just not, not good enough to, you know, play. I haven't really had that many results or like that good results where I can say, Hey, let's turn pro. So um, as a, as a kid and as an 18, 19 year old, I was just like, let's just turn pro. And it wasn't the right idea. And I have a really good team around me and they said, let's just wait another year and see how it goes. And uh, ended up being a pretty good, pretty good um, decision. Uh, you know, I started in Abu Dhabi and played really good in Saudi where all the top, top dogs were there. And, uh, it kind of made it a little easier, but, um, yeah, it was just, a, just had to be patient, uh, for another year. And I know it's hard right now with COVID, but, um, sometimes quick is not better. Well, you had a couple of top five finishes very early on. You, you mentioned Saudi, you were also top five at the the World Super Six in your hometown of, of Perth. You ended up playing 14 events on the European Tour that first year in 2019, 117th uh, on the race to Dubai standings. What was your experience like that first year out playing in Europe? Yeah, uh, it was it was a bit of a roller coaster. Um, it, you know, I thought I had my card locked up and then I ended up not having my card locked up and it was a bit sour and a bit of a kick in the teeth, but uh, I ended up, you know, uh, winning Vic Open shortly after that, so I uh, just made it a little bit sweeter, and um, it it was it was it was awesome. I mean, I travelled so much early on um, from from Abu Dhabi, Saudi, all the way to um, Panama, playing the Corn Ferry Tour, and then back to Australia and um, Qatar, and that was pretty much like all in a row. Maybe like a week break or two, you know, two separate one week breaks, and. It was uh, it was pretty hectic, but you know that's you expect that when you're a rookie on tour and you don't have a full you don't have full status. So, uh, yeah, you got to learn to um, look on the brighter side really quick when you turn pro. Well, we'll get onto that Vic Open uh, victory in a minute, but at the end of 2019, you, you went close a couple of times. You played the New South Wales Open and then the Australian PGA, finished third in both. And I know it would have been disappointing to not get the win, but that certainly must have given you a huge confidence boost heading into 2020. Yeah. Uh, New South Wales, you know, it wasn't, it's not the biggest tournament, but it was really fun to, you know, be around friends and family. Actually, uh, I got family in Sydney and it's, it's just awesome to, you know, see, see the Australian golfers. I really miss all of them. And I played, you know, W open and all the, all the other events when I was an amateur and I got to see them grow up and I, I looked up, to some of them and it was good to see it was good to see familiar faces again uh but yeah it's it's such a special like such a special privilege to play those events as you know a rookie and you know as an amateur so i got to play with Stuart sink and adam scott at the aussie pga and that was that was a big big step forward just because um you know i got a really marquee group and uh, i was on tv and i um yeah, I was just, you know, kind of in the spotlight. So I think uh, you need that a few times and just to get comfortable. But I mean, I, I love crowds as, as a little kid and um, I thrive off them. So uh, I think I've, over the last few weeks, uh, I think I've played pretty good because the crowds have been back. Well, let's talk about that win at the Vic Open. Uh, I was doing the on-course commentary there and I remember walking with you the last couple of rounds and it was playing really tough that week down at 13th Beach. It was really windy. You shot 18 under for four rounds, pretty much dominated. Uh, but the memory that stands out to me was on the 72nd hole and having your sister there who had already finished waiting for you off the side of the green. That must have been a pretty incredible moment. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I just, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. You know, just before COVID hit and all the fans and you, know, you take it for granted. And it's, it was just such an special experience as well. Uh, playing with my sister and my family was there too, which was very special. And uh, I mean, that's probably the only tournament where my whole family's there. And well, dad was at the cafe, but uh, other than that, grandma, mum, and uh, my sister were there, which was really special. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's the only tournament where we get to play together and uh, we get to um, hang out as a family and in, a, in, a, in the same house. So, which we don't do that often. There's, we don't really sit in one spot for a long time. So 
uh, it was it was a very special moment, and obviously Minji being there, uh, it would be nice if she won. But I guess I guess um, I had to step up and win for the family. And uh, <laughs> but it was it was a fun it was a fun moment. Well, that win gave you a two year exemption on the European tour. It also got you into some WGC events. Did did your goals change then, or, or did it allow you to work on some stuff perhaps that you wouldn't have otherwise worked on? Yeah, it's it's a big step, and uh, it was it's always nice to you know get a win on tour. Uh, I know it doesn't happen that often um, for some people, and uh, it was nice to win in my home country, and you know allow allow and open up doors, um, which I which it came very quick. You know, I didn't. It was it was a goal of mine, but when you you know you don't really think about it until you actually win, and then the managers, your manager's like, oh, you're into this and this and this. And it's just like, well, I'm actually competing against the top 60 players in a tournament. So, um, you know, you see these guys on, on TV and you're just like, they're saying congratulations to you. It's pretty special. Well, not long after you won, the, the pandemic hit. The whole world uh, went into a, a holding pattern. Since, since then, you know, we've got some pretty brutal rules uh, here in Australia at the moment with regards to quarantine. Twice you've done... 14 day hotel quarantine how i've got to ask you how it's prevented me from traveling so i i'm keen to hear how well if um well my fans and my family know that friends as well know that uh i play a bit of call of duty on the um on the laptop i got a gaming laptop so that's pretty much how i how i coped i mean i, I don't know it's still it's still brutal with with you know having a really fun hobby and uh, being in quarantine, but you know the food's not the best, and you gotta you gotta order food outside, and obviously the long trip from wherever you were, and then stay in a hotel for two weeks, which is really small. It's pretty much just your room back home, and uh, yeah, you gotta you get locked in, and you can't you can't get out. I mean, Australia's safe, uh, and it's really nice when you get out of it, but um, I mean, I've just been playing COD, and <laughs> that's all I do because. Uh, I wouldn't know what I, what else I would do. Do you have a base outside of Australia? I know, I know your girlfriend lives there. In, uh, sorry, your sister. <laughs> your girlfriend <laughs> lives on the Gold Coast, but your sister's <laughs> there in in uh, in in Dallas. Do you plan on continuing to to come back throughout this pandemic? Yeah, um, I'm probably going to go home after Wentworth, but I um, obviously after Scottish Open, I got into the Open, and I was supposed to leave during the Open Open week, but. Um, obviously got into that and then got into WGC next week. So I, uh, so I had to just stay out here for a bit longer, but right now I'm homeless and I'm just, I'm going, I'm just, my hotel is my home. So I'm just going from house to house or hotel to hotel. So, um, I'm just hanging in there and hopefully I play some good golf still. I still have good golf left and then I can go home and it's a worthwhile trip. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you just missed out on qualifying last year for the, DP World Championship, in spite of the the crazy year that it was, uh, and, and you win at the start of the year, would you still consider the year a success in your books? Yeah, um, last year was a success. I actually could have gone to uh, Dubai, but I ended up not because I would miss Christmas. So um, it was a bit of a sacrifice there. And then if I did go play that a week later or two weeks later, I would have to go back to Abu Dhabi or Dubai and play those events. So. It was a bit hectic uh, and um, I just had to go for one week and then two week quarantine. So I decided not to. And um, this year I will probably head head to uh, Dubai and play that event because I missed it last year. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, at the beginning of this year, 2021, uh, you actually missed all three cuts uh, in the Middle East in, in that desert swing there. Was that a tough pill to swallow or did you feel like there was some good golf right around the corner? Well, actually, I missed the first few, and uh, it was a bit of a bit of a kick in the teeth again. And I just uh, I looked at my swing um, back then, and it was not great at all. I was under plane, and I was trying to hit shots. Um, my brain's there, you know. My brain's like, let's hit a fade, but then I mean, coming from the inside so much, and um, it was just stuck behind me, and I really couldn't hit the golf ball really well. There was still, I mean, decent golf, and I scrapped it around, but not enough to win a tournament or not enough to, you know, play and shoot low numbers. So uh, my coach and I reconstructed and changed a little bit of my swing um, just before I went out to the Belfry, which was probably in June, I think, May. 
And uh, yeah, we worked pretty hard on that and uh, ended up playing pretty good at Belfry. And then, you know, the last month I've, I've made a lot of cuts, which I usually don't make a lot of cuts. So it was nice to actually get my swing, you know, in the right place in a safer and a better position uh, at the top and coming down. So I think that's helped um, really well. And I've just kind of sunk into that swing now. Well, prior to heading to Europe, you actually, you played your first WGC event um, in Florida at the concession club. And that's a really, really hard golf course. And you finished tied for 28th there, beating more than half the field. So that was pretty solid. That must have given you some confidence uh, prior to heading over to Europe, though. Yeah, it's. I think that that was a very big change. Um, I mean, you, you play a tournament with the top 60, you're just like, oh, it's just another tournament. But I think it definitely gives you a big boost because, I mean, you look at these guys on TV and... You know, I shot, I think I shot six under on the Saturday and, you know, people were out there, like all the pros out there that I, you know, I look up to, they all come up to you and they, they treat you like they're their friend. And I'm just like, they're just like, congratulations. But I'm like, oh my God, that's Roy McIlroy or that's John Rahm. You know, they're all out here um, saying congratulations. So uh, it was, it was a really cool, really cool moment and really cool tournament. And uh, I get to play one next week. So um Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can meet a few new friends there and uh, hopefully get to know them better. Well, when you went to Europe, you, you, you mentioned your good finish at uh, uh, your good play, sorry, at the Belfry in the British Masters, and then you had another good finish at the Irish Open, finishing top twenty there. So the game obviously it started to trend nicely. It started feeling good, obviously heading to heading to Scotland. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, as soon as as soon as uh, Belfry started, I um played really good and I had a really lots of good finishes and I uh, just uh yeah it was trending in the in a really really good direction and ended up you know ended up winning Scottish Open which is pretty special and um I just needed to stay patient and you know get rid of the big numbers off the scorecard and uh prior to prior to the Scottish Open I was making just under 20 birdies a, a tournament but just you know shooting under 10 under so I just needed to work on a few things and um, Scottish Open, I played I played at the Renaissance Club last year and I came 30th and uh, I just had really good vibes going into that tournament just because I've, I've been there again and I'm, I was a bit more comfortable with it. Well, you headed into the final round there at the Scottish Open, three shots off the lead. Uh, it was a pretty bunch leaderboard, but you played alongside uh, our fellow Aussie Wade Ormsby that, that final day. Did that pairing, did that help alleviate a little bit of pressure out there? Yeah, I mean, uh, I got to I get to know uh, Wade really well over the last couple of years, and he's one of my top friends out here. And I know he's a bit older than me, but he, you know, he gives me uh, he gives me a, a lot of advice on a few things, and he's he's always been there for me, which has been awesome. But yeah, it was awesome for him for me and him to play together. I think it definitely definitely settled a few nerves, but uh, we just went out there and had fun. I mean, he's such a such a good player, and. I just I I really enjoy how he plays he plays the game and obviously he had a hole in one there and my uh, celebration was a bit a bit more emotional than his I don't know why I just you don't really get to see hole in ones that often and it was I mean he hit a five iron it was it was into the wind and there was rain coming straight down our face so uh, as soon as the um, crowd on the side you know started celebrating I was just jumping all over him so it was uh it's it was a really fun day. It was a really action-packed final round because in addition to that hole-in-one, you had six consecutive birdies on the front nine to, to jump into the lead, wound up shooting a seven under par 64 that got you into a, a playoff with Matthew Fitzpatrick and Thomas Dietrich. At what point did the nerves really start to kick in towards the end? Uh, actually, the not many people know this, but the probably the after the rain delay on the... 16th middle of the 16th fairway on the par five I hit my five iron just to the front of the green and I had a I had a little chip which was really tight and um you know straight after after rain delay that's probably the most nervous I've got and you know I just trickled it down the hill and I had like a two and a half three footer and I was I was that was probably the most nervous I was uh over that putt but um I really felt comfortable the whole day and I was playing good golf, so I uh, I really felt in my in my own skin, and uh, I just hit a lot of good shots that that day. And I don't really usually hit that many greens, but uh, you know I missed the green by two feet, and that was the only green I missed. So 
um, yeah, looking back at it, I played really solid golf and, uh, yeah, um, it settled in like probably a, a week after when a lot of people, when a lot of pros, uh, congratulated me on the way I played. So, um, yeah, looking back at it, I, I played very solid golf. What about that winning moment, holding that winning putt, first playoff hole, 10, 12 feet for birdie? Tell us about the, the emotions when that went in. Yeah, so um, I actually thought I wasn't going to make the playoff uh, just because, you know, Fitzy had like a pretty similar putt on 17 and he had like a little downhill right to left there and it looked exactly like where I was. And I said, well, when I was over, when I was putting, like after I putted that and I missed it low, I, I thought it was a pretty easy putt. I mean, you just had to kind of, hang it out to the right edge and right side and let it trickle in. But um, it kind of bobbled left uh, early on. And uh, I thought Fitzy or Herbie could have, or Thomas could have made a birdie on the last couple of holes. So uh, ended up in a playoff. Um, but actually in regulation on the 72nd hole, I uh, had like a 15, just over 15 footer up the hill for birdie. And I left it literally like a roll short. And that that stung right at that moment because I knew that, could have been a really determining factor and I could have, you know, got in a playoff or actually like one outright. So it was, uh, you know, I went on the range and regrouped and got in a playoff and it was, it was awesome to hold that 12 footer, 10, 12 footer because, well, <laughs> I, I told myself not to leave it short. So I gave it a good hit and um, it just came off, came off the putter really solid and ended up going in and obviously pretty emotional uh, just because, um, I think just because I haven't won in a long time and I've been working really hard. So uh, it was a really exhausting week and um, it was nice to come out on top. Well, any win is huge, but to win a Rolex series event so early on in, in your career, is this just a building block for the future? Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I hope it's, um, I hope it's, a, I mean, it is a very good thing that I did and uh, hopefully I can keep it going. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just a special, you don't get to win events and that often. And I got to win with such a strong field. So it was, it was so amazing to win and play against those guys. And hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's um, um, a really good building block for, like you said, um, in the future. Well, it opens many doors as well. You get into to major championships, uh, WGCs. You're currently eighth on uh, the race to Dubai standings. You'll play the DP World Championship at the end of the year. What, what's the goals for the rest of 2021? Um, I think I haven't really thought of it that much, but uh, obviously, obviously try to finish uh, top 10 in the race to Dubai, which is you know going to open up a lot of doors. And I haven't really thought about it too much, but I mean, I take one week at a time and set a few small goals for that week and... Uh, and hopefully I can just keep crushing it. But um, for now, I'm just going to keep grinding and hopefully get some good results in, uh, under the belt. Well, following that win, uh, I did see that yourself and uh, Lucas Herbert, who'd won the Irish Open the week before, you you both took your first private jet flights down to the Open Championship at Royal St. George's. Uh, is that something you could get used to? Yeah, uh, that's it was amazing. I, um, it was a funny story because... Uh, Obviously, I had to do media and a few duties after my win and couldn't catch a charter flight. So I was like, uh, bummer. Um, but they said, we got a flight, we got a plane for you tomorrow. I was like, oh, cool. I thought it was another charter flight. And then we rock up and it's like this private airport. And we're like, I'm like, ah, oh, okay, that's pretty sick. So um, <laughs> it was definitely a very, uh, I don't know. I think it was one of the proud moments. I mean, I shouldn't have been on that jet, but uh, because you know, I had no other way to get there. It was, uh, it was really special. And, um, obviously Lucas being there, uh, a fellow Aussie and it was, um, nice to, nice to hang out with him. And it was just, yeah, it was an unbelievable experience. I, I talked to Xander uh, at the open the week after or right when I landed and, um, I told him that it was like a, it was a jet and he, he saw the photo on social media and he said, that's like a proper jet, like a really, really good jet. And, I just said I wanted to be like you, Zander, and he said, "Bro, that's a really good jet. I want to be like you." So, <laughs> so it was um, it was pretty, it was a pretty cool feeling. Uh, I was just on the sofa the whole whole way, whole way up and down. So, <laughs> it was um, really comfy. You're the envy of uh, the golf stars, mate. Uh, t t <laughs> tell us about um, your experience at the Open Championship. It was your your first major, Royal St George's, a, a great links layout. What was it like? Uh, it was, um, I mean, I obviously didn't play too good. I was pretty exhausted from the week before, but 
I, uh, it was an awesome experience. I, um, just the fans out there, it was probably the best fans I've been out and probably not the most fans I've been out, uh, like playing, but it was just incredible. They were very, uh, they were very respectful. And a lot of the tour pros out here on the PJ tour say it's, you know, the best fans they've ever had. So, um, I'll embrace it and obviously be grateful for it. And, uh, it was, it was an amazing experience. It was fair. Um, if you hit it good, then you get rewarded. If you don't, then you're in uh, knee high hay. So uh, I experienced that uh, on the near the final round, the final uh, final few holes on the first round, and made a triple bogey on 15, and that was um, that was pretty brutal. I uh, probably could have made more than more than a double digit number there because uh, I got lucky and got a got a dropping from a mole burrowing, but. Uh, it was um it was brutal. I probably couldn't have taken the club back. Um, so it was uh it was fair. I mean, it was it was a really good golf course. So I played there as an amateur, and uh, I thought I was going to play pretty good, but um obviously yeah, just the tiredness kicked in and uh, just a few mental mental lapses and um but it's all good. I, I, we learn and we live and we learn. So I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully next year. Well, look, I know, I know you love your, outside of golf, I know you love your food. You're a bit of a foodie. Uh, Travelling has been obviously restricted, very difficult, living in a tour bubble. Has there still been an opportunity whilst you're out there to, to explore different restaurants and, and cafes and the food scene in different places? Uh, unfortunately, not as much as I would like. And obviously, the European Tour are doing a wonderful job keeping us safe and uh, healthy and um and I, 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 the food has been, you know, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But, I mean, what can we do? Like I said, we look at the bright side uh, as soon as we turn pro and when, um, when we learn the reality of it. So, uh, I, when I'm over here in America or with my sister or with family and friends, I uh, tend to eat a lot of good food and um, get, to, get to celebrate and, you know, eat at nice, nice restaurants. So, when we when when I'm out, out here in Dallas, I've, I've we've eaten Korean food a couple of times already, and I've only been with my sister for a few days. So, uh, so yeah, we miss we miss a lot of the good foods, but um, uh, it is what it is. Uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Call of Duty uh, before. There's quite a scene, isn't there, amongst the European Tour players at the moment? The likes of Sean Crocker and Sam Horsfield, Garrick Porteous, uh, to name a few, that really get into their online gaming. Do you get competitive with those guys? a uh, little bit um some of them go off and on obviously golf's priority and i learned that in my first first covid outing uh when i was out on europe and i played too much or more than i needed to and uh i wasn't very focused so i i play not as much and play on the weekends or when i miss the cut or on the monday of the next day on travel day so uh you know we call of duty we play in like a squad so um I mean, it's a bit competitive, but we're on a team, so we we take care of each other and we uh we revive each other if someone dies and that. But um, it's 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 awesome to have a bit of a life outside the golf. Uh, obviously, COVID's COVID's around and we can't go out, so most of us um go back to you know playing COD and on our gaming laptops and playing something that we enjoyed as kids and enjoy as now. It'd be remiss of me to not ask you about um your social media presence and before you turned pro you became uh you know you became insta famous for your stingers and all-round golf content as of right now is it fair to say that uh you're the king of european tour instagram what do you think <laughs> uh i don't know i've always i've always loved social media as a kid and when i see the opportunity that a video might go viral you know i um i do i do a lot to <laughs> get that video and especially Sahali uh such a cool track and the trees are you know really high up and you can see the ball trace and a lot of my fans from from then and earlier I mean it's it's been like a pretty good journey uh, a lot of them you know message me now and you know I, I followed you because of your stingers and now you're winning you just won the Scottish Open against all these big pros so it's it's been a pretty cool uh, fan base and uh, I really enjoy social media and it's really fun so um, I mean I don't know about being I don't have the most followers on the European tour but I really I really have an awesome fan base and I love interacting with them.
I looked just one thing before I, I let you go. You did you did touch upon this earlier on when you said you know the one piece of advice that you'd give to the younger players would be to to have fun out there. And the one thing that I do notice uh, with you is you don't you, when you're away from golf and when you're grinding, you keep things fresh. You do keep things fun. I noticed when you were back in in WA, you were there in a in a net doing some some crazy old swings with Hayden Hopewell and a few of, a few yeah. of the other boys. Uh, do you do you feel like that will help with your longevity and, and not burning out? Because I, I know I've witnessed a lot of guys that just grind themselves into the ground and then you never hear from them again from the age of 30. So is that something that you plan on doing going forward and, and something that you tell uh, kids to, to follow? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, you get so stuck into a life and you need to be this serious golf pro and you need to be this and that, but... I'm just going to be myself and a lot of people know me as, you know, the annoying, fun, fun kid. And especially my sister knows that I'm annoying. And uh, I always like to like to keep things fun. Um, you know, life can be pretty tough. So I just like to make it better for everyone else. And um, sometimes not better. My sister, a bit annoying, but um, I just, uh, I just, uh, I just like to have a laugh and, um, have, have, have a lot of fun time. So I think, uh, yeah, a lot of advice would just to have fun. But um, yeah, like I said, it could be tough out here. So I'm just trying to keep it as fun as possible. Good. Well, I just saw you take your hat off. You were wearing a visor uh, when the <laughs> tour came back last year. Are we going to see that make a comeback? Uh, I think my hair's a little long for the visor. I, 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 have, a bit of a, I have a bit of a flow back here. So I'm, I'm trying to grow it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just it's just fun. I've had I had I had a little bit of a flow flow as an as an amateur, and I'm trying to bring it back a little bit. So uh, it's just all fun and games. I'm I'm just growing my hair out. Uh, my family don't like it. They want me to cut my hair, but <laughs> I'm not going to listen to them like I like I never do and <laughs> and grow it out. <laughs> Well, look, Minwoo Lee, thanks very much for uh, coming on the podcast today, taking the time out of your busy schedule and uh, congrats on all your, your recent success and uh, no doubt bigger things ahead and we look forward to watching it uh, watching it all play out. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a fun journey for uh, my friends, family and fans, so hopefully I can keep it going. But um, yeah, hopefully I can have another podcast with you soon. To watch another European Tour video, click here and to subscribe, click here.